Abdullah Öjlan has been held incommunicado for over three years, one month and seven days, say lawyers for freedom. Turkish Defence Minister Yashar Guler discusses Turkey's counter-terrorism efforts and ongoing military operations targeting the PKK in northern Iraq in an interview with CNN Turk. Two civilians were killed in a Turkish airstrike in the Kurdistan region of Iraq on the 28th of April, with one person reportedly injured and missing. And a team of scientists have digitally reconstructed the face of a woman who was buried in a cave 75,000 years ago in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Learn more with Media News. The Association of Lawyers for Freedom is publishing a regular bulletin keeping track of the isolation of Abdullah Öjalan on the prison island of Imrali. Öjalan, who has been in prison for more than 25 years in total, has now been kept in absolute isolation for three years, one month and seven days. Öjalan has been kept in solitary confinement for more than 24 of his 25 years of incarceration, often with several year-long intervals between phone calls with his family and lawyers. The last communication with Öjalan, a disrupted call with his family, was on the 25th of March 2021. The United Nations Mandela Rules state that prolonged solitary confinement is a form of torture. The UN defines a prolonged solitary confinement as any period in excess of 15 days. The Turkish General Directorate of Prisons recently responded to an application by the People's Equality and Democracy Party by flatly denying that Öjalan was being held in isolation conditions. Meanwhile, another prisoner, Vesi Aktash, was not released as planned on the 28th of April. Instead, the Administration and Observation Board has postponed his release for another year. In a recent interview with CNN Turk, Turkish Defence Minister Yashar Güler provided insights into Turkey's controversial military operations targeting the Kurdistan Workers' Party or PKK in northern Iraq. Terrorism will be destroyed at its source. We will carry out continuous operations, Güler said. The focus of the discussion swiftly turned towards Turkey's counter-terrorism strategy, with Guler emphasising the determination to eradicate the PKK at its source. While detailing Turkey's relentless efforts to combat terrorism, Minister Guler urged Kurdish groups in Iraq to abandon terrorist activities, offering assistance for those willing to seek peace. He dismissed claims that the People's Defence Units, or YPG, is a separate entity from the PKK. The US military has a long-standing relationship with the Kurdish-led SDF and YPG, and a Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder made it clear last year that those forces are not related to the PKK. Guler also said that Turkey had played a significant role in the fight against ISIS and the neutralization of thousands of ISIS militants. Some international observers dispute this angle, with journalist Fahim Tashtakin pointing out that Turkey's political landscape has made the country the most accessible in the region for militants to freely enter, hide and operate identifying the country as a major recruitment pool for ISIS. Guler also made the claim that the goal of Turkey's operations in northern Syria was protecting the Turkish borders and citizens from threats. Our people no longer have any security problems at our borders, he said, adding, we have no eyes on anyone's land. Two people lost their lives in an airstrike carried out by Turkey in the Kurdistan region of Iraq or KRI on the 28th of April. The bodies of the deceased, identified as Ahmet Haidari and Razul Yunusi, were returned to their families on the 2nd of May. There are reports that one more person was injured in the attack, but they remain missing. According to the Community Peacemaker Teams, or CPT, a violence reduction and human rights organisation in Iraq, the two civilians were gathering plants and beets in the countryside of Erbil's Sidikan district when they were targeted by airstrikes. The strike came just days after Al-Arabi Al-Jadid reported that leaders in Erbil and Baghdad had agreed to support Turkey's airstrikes in Iraqi Kurdistan. Previously, two civilians in Shaladze district of Iraqi Kurdistan's northern city of Duhok were killed in Turkish airstrikes in March. Two other civilians were wounded. At the time of that attack, the CPT reported that the Turkish military had already carried out 241 bombings and assaults in the Kurdistan region since the beginning of the year. In total, at least 12 civilians have been killed this year in the KRI by Turkish bombardment. 
A team of scientists have digitally reconstructed the face of a woman who was buried in a cave 75,000 years ago in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. The woman, a Neanderthal, had died in her 40s and was found in Shanadar Cave on Bradost Mountain in Erbil, Iraqi Kurdistan. Multiple remains have been uncovered in the cave, dating back to 1953. The recreation is for Secrets of the Neanderthals, a new show by the BBC produced for Netflix.